Yo, what's up? I'm Zach. Welcome back to my channel of Ruby Mythology. Today, I'll bring you guys a new what if scenario, and that is what if John didn't unlock his semblance? One short. And before I get to you on, uh, make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on the notification bell for more Ruby content. That shows it means a lot to me that you guys want to see more Ruby content on this channel. And the reason why I said one short, because I feel like this is going to be just one uh, one video, Sandra, several parts, because this is going to take in Volume 5 towards Volume 8, because I feel like there's no reason for me to go into four parts or two or two parts, because it would just be uh, a waste, so might as well just do it into one. And this idea came to my mind when I was spoken to Hollow, and it came, it got me thinking. How would this change if John did not unlock his semblance in Volume 5 where Weiss got injured in that scenario? How would this change? How would that affect um, Volume 6, 7, and 8? How would that affect uh, the Team Ruby and John and the other characters? How would this affect? And the reason why I thought of this because, well... um. Is I will explain that in the end of the video, and also I will answer the guy y'all guys question about does John ever gonna unlock his semblance of you know the end of this series, you know the series of this scenario. Um, I will answer that in uh, the end of the video, but right now I want to go ahead and get to the scenario, and I bet a lot of y'all was not expecting. Hey guys, we've seen this video be uploaded because, well, I was bored, out of my mind, so I might as well go ahead and get this over with because I got nothing better to do. So yeah, well, that way, let's go on and get into this scenario. So basically, we start off on this scenario where Team Ruby, Team Jennifer, well, minus Pyrrha, uh, Oscar, slash Ospen, and Crow are heading down to... Um, uh, Haven Academy, just like the original, like, everyone goes in and meet Lionheart, and we hear the same line, just like the original, nothing has changed, until Yang saw a burr, which is Yang's mother, when Yang says, mother, then Crow shoots at the burr, which is her sister, and we do see Raven appear behind, uh, uh, come out from behind, of uh, Leo, and we hear Ruby say Raven, and Nora said there we are magic. And then, uh, where Ruby, where Raven said, if you're gonna shoot me, shoot me. That was insulted. And Crow said, why are you here? I could have asked you the same thing. You been scheming, little brother, planning on attack your own sister, Leo. What have you done? And. Basically, Raven goes on that uh, I only made a choice, and now it's you guys' turn to make a choice by looking at Yang and Yang getting pissed off. And Crow said, "You have the spray maiden," and Raven said, "Yes." They hand over so we could work together. We could beat Salem. And Raven goes on all this time that you still believe there is no beating Salem. And of course, and of course, Ray. Ro Ruby goes on to say about there is, uh, there's a lot of things they've been through that is possible. And then until Raven said, you sound just like your mother. And of course, she opened her portal. She, a fireball shoot aimed right at Ruby. And we see Cinder, Emerald, Mercury, and uh, Vanal. And we hear Cinder say, good evening boys and girls. And Ruby says, Cinder. And we hear Mercury say, Come on, guys. Is that any way to greet to your old friend? And Yang want to charge at Mercury until Crow said, Everyone stay calm. Until uh, someone comes inside and barricade the door. And Oscar said, Oh, no. And then we see Hazel said, The white fan are getting ready to put a demolition in. There, no one's getting in and no one's getting out. And of course... And like I said, everything goes out the same until Y said, this is all a trap. And Crow asked Raven, how long you been with them? And then Cinder goes on and 
reveal what Iowa, uh, not Iowa, uh, Leo been doing by giving all the information about Huntsman and Huntresses. And Leo's like, stop it. And Crow's like, it was you. You set up this mystical council. You gave out information to every Huntsman and Huntress in the kingdom. And you gave it all to her? I, I couldn't find any of them. Because you let them kill them. Because you let them kill her. I mean, no, no, let me rephrase that. Because you let her kill them. There you go. And then, um, Cinder trying to be, you know, how she is the original until we hear John said, What is wrong with you? How you can be so broken inside to take so many lives and come in and rub it on a face that has something to be proud of. John, hold that wet damn smile on your face. Everyone stay calm. I'm going to make you pay for what you did. You hear me? Kid, well, say something. And of course, Cinder said, Who are you again? <sighs> Sorry, I, that, that still gets me. And of course, John pulls out his weapon and charges at Cinder just like the original. And the fight goes out similar. John versus Cinder, Ruby versus Emerald. Yang versus Mercury, Wise versus uh, Vanal, um, Crow versus Raven, Cr uh, Ran and Or fight against uh, versus Hazel, and Oscar slash Ozpen fight against Leo. So basically, all that goes out the same, and nothing has changed. So basically, the fight goes similarly, but nothing else. And um, until um. Weiss or Briggs and we hear a scream and John looks at Weiss and Cinder said are you gonna let her die too? Stop messing with me! If that was you want and of course both John and Cinder charge at each other to have one final clash and Ruby having a flashback of Pura and Ruby used her silver eye then well Emerald knock her ass out and Cinder feel the pain from her arm, and John take this opportunity to finish her off, but missed. Just like the original, and this infuriated with Cinder, and she said, "Do you really think you could defeat? Uh, do you really think you have a chance against me? You? You're just a failure with a death witch." And John said, "If I die then by then time, then it's worth it. They the one who matter." And we see how the fight goes out, like the original, and Cinder said, You think so? And she focusing on Weiss, walk towards, summon the blade by using her main power, and John screams, and said, No! No! And throws the spear and aim at Weiss, like you can see the image from the background without the text. And everyone stopped, and everyone... Lost it. Yang is shot. John's uh, losing it. Like, tears coming out of her. Tears coming out of his eye. And Oscar, you know, just lost for word until we hear John screams out, Weiss! And then uh, John runs towards Weiss and check on her. And then, of course, Oscar hits Hazel and. Not hit Hazel. Hits uh, Lionheart and Lionheart aim. I uh, actually uh, hits on Hazel, and Hazel said, "You make that boy make a fool of you." And he said, and Leo said, "It's not just a boy, it's a husband. He already been reincarnated." And Hazel see the cane, and he, the anger is building up. He said, "Husband," and Oscar said, "Ruby, you get husband." Oh no. And, and Hazel said, you think you can hide from me? And pulls out all the dust and he said, you, you pay for what you did. You'll die over and over again. And, uh, so basically, Oscar's like, um, should we fight? And I'll spend like, no, run. And of course, Cinder... Was like, Ospin is here? Is that a problem? No. 
Right now we have the, the advantage. Let's not go to ways. Leo, open the vash door. And Leo does exactly as that. And Yang is the only one who's uh, who's still fighting. Where uh, Nora is with uh, with unconscious Ruby, Ren, and John are with Wise. And Nora says, stop them. We got your team covered. And before Yang by the do, she get hit by Mercury. So basically it's 2v1. And let's say Yang's still getting her ass kicked. And the fight between Hazel and Oscar and Crow goes out the same until Leo interfered. And Cinder asked Leo to make sure they keep Ruby alive. So, yeah. Basically, I'm going to say this right now. Whatever happens between Cinder, Vanal, and Raven, that goes out the same. Nothing has changed. Lily, nothing has changed. And, um, when, now we're focusing on John, when he's having both of his hands covered up the wound to stop the bleeding, and Ren check Weiss's pulse, and John asks, Ren, talk to me. And Ren said, this is bad. And John's like, no, 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 not again. And the fight goes out the same. And, um, and it's got even more worse. The fight goes on just like the original. And, uh, so basically, um, then later on, when Ruby's still out of commission and Yang still gets her ass beat, and Nora tries to, you know, be in guard with Ren and John, and by protecting Weiss, and Ren said, "I I don't know what to do. This this is uh, I don't know how long she's gonna make it." And John's like, "No, no, this is, has, doesn't have to be this way." Please, we can't lose someone else. And John tries to concentrate, see if he could unlock his symbols at that right moment. He tried, he tried, but nothing works. He, and he doesn't know what the hell. And and then Wise is her heart beat is slowing down. Her heart is beating like boop 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 boop. Slowly, slowly to... It was beeping fast. Then it's starting to slow down. Slowing down so the heart could stop. At the right moment. Weiss... Um, Weiss heart stop. Her mouth... Lit, her mouth already left wide, a little bit wide open. And her arm felt lightless when John... When Ren could feel it and the pulse just stopped. Ren is just horrified. And John looks at Weiss. She's not breathing. She's not moving. Her heart is not beating. And he looks at Ren. Ren looks away, but not looking at John. And and Ren, I mean, and then John, it looks at his place, his ear to Weiss's chest to see if her heart's beating. And John's like, no, 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 And John tried to freaking CPR by pressing, make sure her heart stays beat. He's trying to trying his best to keep her alive. He's not making this mistake again. He's not letting anyone die, not this time. And he tries, and he tries, and he tries, trying to give her, trying to get wise the mouth, the mouth to give her the air. He tried, but nothing works. He screams out and cry in pain that this cannot happen. First, first Pira, now Weiss. Why does this happen to him? Why? And then John is broken and depressed. He could he could do nothing. He just stood there, tears coming down his eye while he was crying. And then Nora and Ren, Ren is furious. And Nora sees that Weiss is dead. And this horrifies Nora. And he's and she is enraged as well. 
So Bo Noah and Ren charge at uh, uh charge at Hazel. So basically, uh, Ren does get knocked out just like the original, and Noah does get uh ground um does get fl- fl- uh, flo- th- I can't talk. Basically, Hazel does the same thing just like the original, but Hazel used lightning does on Noah, but that didn't go well, and Noah. Azor much lightning that she can to knock this guy down to make sure he stays down. And he and she swings the hammer hard as she can to knock Hazel out. And before that Ruby got up and she when Ruby got up after that happened, she sees John standing there crying. And Ruby goes in there saying, John, Weiss, what's happened? What's going on? And John's like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Ruby. I failed. And John, and Ruby's confused. Like, what, what do you mean? What's happened? She's dead. She's dead. She's dead because of me. Forgive me. And Ruby is dawnstruck. And and Ruby is heartbreak. Her teammate, her BFF just died in battle. And Ruby started to have the memories of the death of Penny. The death of Pura. And now this happens again. And Ruby can feel the anger. Bowl into her heart. And now she wants to make Cinder pay. But right now. She needs to help Yang. Because she is struggling. So Yang. Uh, um, so Ruby. Goes and help Yang. To take out both Emerald Mercury. And Ruby is. Furiated. And Yang's like, thanks, sis. You okay? What ha- is Weiss okay? And Yang's like, Ruby's like, no. No. I'm pissed. And no. Weiss didn't make it. And by hearing that from Yang, she is shocked. And the, and the bowl of rage building up. And we hear Murga say, aw, what's wrong? That the Snow White didn't make it? That's just sad. Just like your other two friends died at Beacon. And this enraged both of the, the sisters. And they just going ham on them too. Emerald deal with Ruby. Ruby deals with Emerald. And Yang deals with Mercury. And uh, then they beat the shit out of them. Making sure they, let's just say, Emerald and Murray, making the inch of the beating of their life. And, um, so basically, what happened outside between Blake, Son against Adam, and the, the Fawn is against the Fang? That goes out of saying, and Hazel gets, uh, Hazel goes back in and deals with the, uh, go back inside and join the fight. Basically, after that, he joins in, and after Emerald and Mercury being dealt with, they still could find, but they just are exhausted by all the beating when Hazel came in. Ruby and Yang, they just going after Hazel. They want to give Hazel an inch of his life. And then, and before they about to do, Blade jumps in and hit Hazel in the back of the head and knock him down to the ground. And and Yang and Ruby look at Blake. See, they say nothing. Same goes for Blake. And Blake turns her head and sees John crying, still on his knee right next to the dead bodies of Weiss. And Blake can put all the pieces together. Weiss is dead. She just got to see her two teams, but one of them just died? What the hell just happened? And Blake didn't have no word. All she could tell is she could feel the anger. Bowling down to her heart as well. 
they need to end this now. And basically, um, uh, basically, um, Ruby tells Yang, go, get the relic. And Yang's like, don't, you don't have to tell me twice. And Yang goes to, heads down to the, uh, the vault where Raven is at. And of course, the conversation between Yang and Raven goes out the same. But Yang, as in that he just lost his teammate, the person that he had a friend just died because of Raven by joining Cinder. Now the blood of Wise will be on Raven's hand. And Raven doesn't care. But there's a time where Yang freaking wanted to punch her mother. But but at this point, Yang doesn't give two shit. So Yang just sucker punch Raven dead in the fucking face. Raven falls to the ground. And got back up, pulling out her weapon and get ready to a fight. And her Raven is in rage. Her eyes blaze and red crimson red fire out of her eye. And Ra Raven said, You really want to go through this? Huh? And Yang said, like, And uh, Raven and Yang reload her shotgun gauntlet. And, and Raven said, You really want to fight your own mother? And Yang's like, you're not my mother. Summer was my mother. And and then the fight breaks out between Yang and Raven. The fight is evenly matched. But deep down, this is the fight between Yang and Raven without her using her uh, spray maiden. The fight goes completely insane. Whenever Yang gets beat down, she gets back on and continues on fighting. Same goes to Raven. Both of them don't have their aura, so basically this is the battle for their life. So basically until... Um, who actually win the fight was Raven, but she was to kill Yang. But she couldn't because she lost all out of Blade's dust ammo. And... And she could see, Raven could see the anger in, Ray, in Yang's face. And she sees the look on, uh, she, and Yang could see Raven's t started to tear a little bit, but still angry at the same time. And Raven realized what she was doing. She was about to kill her own daughter. Her own flesh and blood. She doesn't care if she kills Crow, but she didn't want to kill her own daughter. What would Ty think? What how how would Ty feel if Raven killed Yang? The Ty will go after, will go after Raven. What even worse, Ruby and Crow will go after her by force if they need to. It will cause more more war between the Huntsmen's and the um, the Bandits. Or a battle between them. She doesn't want that. And she stares back. And she said, I'm sorry. And Yang said, yeah, me too. Then Raven storms off just like the original. But Yang sees her leave. And then Yang gets up walking slowly. Because she is badly hurt. I mean... She did get some bruises in the cut mark from um, uh, Raven. When she got to the relic, she does fall to her knees crying that she knows the reason why her mother left. And now she knows what it's like to have this anger to be like her mother. And by saying something to her face, by saying, you were never my mother, Summer was. And... So basically, in the fight, Hazel, Mercury, and Emerald, they are exhausted and tired. But Ruby tells him, just give up. You have lost. And this pissed off Mercury, and Emerald goes on just like the original. But apparently, Hazel and Mercury want to get the hell out. 
And Mercury tells Emerald to, we need to get out, Emerald. And basically she used her last semblance and basically showed um, Salem. And this did fear everyone. And Blight asked, what was that? An illusion. But the accurate one of that. That was Salem. And then we see Hazel carrying um, Mer Emerald and Mercury running from is behind Hazel. And we see Adam up top of the tree seeing them and he follows them. So basically the hero won but without the cause. But with the cause of the death of Weiss. And John is still broken. And also, Leo does, still dies, just like the original, I forgot to mention that. And, yeah. So basically, they won, and they got the relic, but it comes with the cost of the death of Waishni. And now, John is still, he ain't tearing no more. He's just not in the right mind. He's in a dark place, broken. His heart shattered. He just lost another friend. The person that he used to have a crush with before Pure came around. Before that day, Pure kissed him. And he just lost another person that he cared. A person that could be his future fiance if them two just, you know, got to know each other a bit more. But now she's gone. Because of John didn't save her. It's not because that he didn't unlock his semblance. It's just not fair for him. It literally, it's not, it's not fair. How can John protect people if he only have his aura, a stupid sword, and a stupid shield, and a damn armor with no semblance to protect the people that he cared and loved? He failed to save Pura, and now he just failed to protect and save Weiss. The team Ruby, C, both Ruby, Yang, and Blake come around where Ren and Nora moved John out of the way so they could have their time to grieve of the death of Weiss. And they both fall to their knees. White, Ruby was the first one. She started to bust out crying like... like no tears holding back. All tears. Ruby falls laying down on the dead body on Weiss. Cover her face on her belt on Weiss's belly. Crying all out. Let it all out. And Yang just couldn't barely stand it. But she falls to her with one knee. Crying. Crying without looking looking at Weiss. And it cried, she cried even more. Blake. Tears, a little bit of tears come out of her eye, even though her and Wise never see eye to eye. But Wise was her friend, her partner, her ally, her rival. But she just died, and she just got here to see her team again. Something that she's not expecting to see. This is not how the Team Ruby reunion should be actually happen. This shouldn't. But apparently. Blake just lost another friend, but she believes that she is not ready to reunite her team. How would this change? How would this affect the other characters around Remnant? How would the Shin family react? How would Winter take this? Whatever worse, how can John move on of this pain, of this, until we hear Crow? Tell her they actually won, but it comes with a cost. And we hear Oscar say that he's resting. We need to take the lamp to Atlas. Then Oscar passed out just at the original. And we see Crow looking at the girls crying for the loss of their friend, their teammate. And then Crow looks at the relic of knowledge. With the light, the blue light glow, and then we only hear sigh, uh, the sigh of Crow. 
and everything went black. And then I feel like, um, you know what? I, you know what? I think this is where I should end this video here because, ah, uh, I feel like I just want to do that because I want to add something, the emotion and feeling to this. You know what? Never mind. Um, I kind of make up my mind, honestly, you guys. And, um, hmm, I don't know. I did say this is going to be one short. You know what? Fuck it. I, I'm going to keep my word. We're going gonna, gonna to keep continuing on, but right now, I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, I'm back. Sorry, I was thinking about continuing on or ending the video. But I'm going to continue on, like I said. Sorry if I said that. Okay, this is why I'm going to end it here. I changed my mind. Sorry, I honestly forgot. Because I went in depth to this, okay? It made me forgot all about it. So, yes. It's been two weeks since the attack of Haven Academy. The day where the White Fane attack. The day that they lost White Schnee. And both of the teams, Crow and Ospin, now Ospin and Oscar, they're still in a dark place right now. They're still just kids. And they just witnessed another death that just happened. John had to see Pira, had to see West die in front of his eyes. And when it was worse, Pira, Ruby just lost. Three of his closest friends. First Penny. Then Pira. Then Weiss. How many people had to die because of Cinder? And John blamed himself. The guilt. The pain. The, the failure that he is. He's the only one who's been in the dark place. Much darker than Ruby. Ruby's personality has changed. The kindest girl became more ven blinded with bloodthirsty vengeance. All she wanted to make sure to kill Cinder if she is alive. So, basically, there's something I want to go over. What ap whatever happens between uh, Salem, Tyrion, Watts, Hazel, Emerald Mercury... That goes out of the same. Nothing has changed. And what happens between Cinder meeting Neo and team with Neo? That goes out of the same. Nothing has changed. So I'm focusing on the hero side uh, point of view. So that's where I'm going to be focusing on. If you guys may not know, if, I, if you guys are wondering why I'm not going to be focusing on the other characters like the villains... Like I said, that all goes out the same. This is about the heroes. About how they deal with this kind of trauma. So basically, everything went quiet for them. They're not saying anything. They just want to go ahead and get this rally to Atlas. And everyone's mind, the thought is, how would everyone, I mean, uh, how would White's family feel? How would Winter feel? That's in their mind. And we see John is the one who's holding the weapon in a suitcase. A weapon that belongs to Weiss. So the reason why I want John to be the one to carry the briefcase with Weiss's weapon is because, well, why not? And with it, is a crown that is part of Weiss's ponytail in the back. And John is carrying that until they until they go to Atlas. And that's going to be difficult for them. Without Weiss, everything is going to be completely changed. And so basically no one talked. And the only person who's been speaking is Blade when she speaks with Ilium and Sun. 
when Blake told them what happened that night and that Weiss died, Son could tell he was there. And Blake's parents, they were there. They saw what happened. They saw their teammate just died. And Son, Son is broken. She want, he wants to be there for Blake, but he can't. And Blake understands because Son has been away from his team for far too long. And he needs to reunite. Hell, even Ilya wants to go with Blake. But Ilya has a job that Blake's father gave her to rebuild the White Fang to be what it is. And, oh, also I forgot to mention about Adam. Yeah, that goes out of saying. And Adam is furiated, just like the original. So, yeah. Like I said, all, whatever happens with the villains goes out of the same. Nothing changed. And, um, so basically, Blake actually glad that Sun and Ilya understand. And Neptune? Neptune is broken as well. Because him and Weiss, they did have a good time together when, um, when they're in Beacon. When Weiss was flirting with Neptune and Neptune is flirting with Weiss. And the time where Weiss and Blake, I mean, Weiss and Neptune had that good time chatting at, you know, the, the ball or the dance. Neptune is devastated and... He's just going to miss her. Yeah, even though Neptune actually didn't like Weiss. He really he really does. But now she's gone, he will never find anyone like her. And that hurt his heart. Badly. And then later on, all the teams just go in the train and nothing. Just completely silence. No one had the words to talk or anything. And Crow was the only one who broke the silence. He wanted to see if he could cheer up the girls, his nieces, because he feel like they need it. But apparently Ruby turns him down on that offer because they're still not in the right mind. The flashback goes out the same, but apparently nothing. Permanently nothing. Because they, what else could they do? What else they could say? They just lost wife. Hell, they had to bury her so she could be at rest. And that's just sad. And who actually buried her? Crow, obviously. Because he feels like this is just too much for the kids. They should not be able to bury her. So, Crow buried the body of Weiss for his nieces and the others. Right after Weiss been buried, they had her they had Weiss's funeral and they all had all the flowers white rose to empathize Weiss and then they had her uh, emblem in a stone uh, sto uh, sto uh, stone uh, tablet and had her name Waishni born in Atlas and also became a huntresses in Beacon Academy and the member of Team Ruby and a friend to everyone and then that's it showing the last letter sh only shows the emblem of Weiss and everyone are just still in that depressful day. It's been two weeks since it happened. After that, they had their fu had Weiss's funeral. So, Crow does did actually inform Anya that they're on their way. But there's something that he needs to tell Winter, and something that Winter needs to know. So basically, they all know why it's only trust and care for Winter than her other family members, which just makes a lot more sense 
for that Winter should be the one to be know about this. And this did gave Winter wondering about it. He she probably thinks about Weiss, which is a good thing. If Weiss is with Crow and the others, she is safe. And then she's on her way back home. Which she doesn't know about Ah, uh, yeah. That's uh Which we'll get into that volume seven later on. Until Grim Attack and Yang's like, you gotta be kidding me. All we want is just peace and quiet to re recover, but God, he's grim. So basically, they gotta get their shit together, and basically, they're not in a, in a, in a good mood. They're in a dark mode right now. And of course, when they dealt with the grim, until they got into cave, everyone. Wondering what the hell is going on until Ospen takes over about about the relic, and this did pissed off Yang, and Ruby said, "I know we are pissed about this, but we don't have the time for that. We need to protect these people." And so basically, they do that just like the original, where John, Ren, Nora goes with other civilians to get them safety. Where Team Ruby, um, Crow, and Oscar slash Ospin, you know, get, you know, crash, and Maria is part of the group now, just like the original. And basically, the reveal of Ospin's origin and Salem's origin, all that goes out of the same. That scene goes out of the same, but a lot more anger with Yang. Blake and Ruby, and that leaves Crow in a depressed mode later on. And the reason why Yang will be even more pissed than she was the original is because they trusted Ospin. When it was worse, Ospin did got the classmate killed, uh, got Pierre killed, and even got Weiss killed. So yeah, so basically, all that scene goes out the same. So basically, I'm going to be lazy on this. I'm going to be skipping towards where um, where team where Ruby, Blake, and Yang trying to get the relic until they came across the apathy. And until Maria came around and she asked Ruby about the silver eye, which that goes out the same. After that, uh... Yang managed to get, give one, get out of escape, and uh, Yang was the only one who throws the damn bottle to so Blake could use the fire dust. But I forgot to mention before that, Blake and Yang still have that PTSD about Adam, but right now they do not give a shit about it anymore because they're still in a depressed and a you know, lost wise. And basically Blake wants you know, wanted to be there for Yang and Yang wants to be there for Blake, but how they can how? After what just happened with losing Weiss, how would that work? So basically I forgot to mention that, that was my fault. So they managed to escape and Ruby asks, how does she know about, you know, about the silver eye? And Maria tells her that she used to have a silver eye before. And, of course, the episode goes out the same. But a little bit, a little bit good things for one. A little bit good. Let's say John, Ren, and Nora, they're sure happy. For once, for the past two weeks, they finally have something to be happy for. That they are okay no one got hurt. No one died. And later on, when and then we get to see Ruby being smile again when John when Ruby sees John's older sister. Ooh, and Yang does that she is being how she is in the original when she saw the little baby, and um basically 
I'm adding a little bit of light to it because they needed something to be smile for once. Until things hit the fan. Where everyone goes to where the Atlas ship is at. But when John and them, they told him they tried. But uh, that didn't go or just that original. And when Ruby, Yang, Blake, Oscar, and Crow and Maria showed up. That still goes out the same. Crow leaves, say that he's going to drink. And Nora said, oh, who cares? We got an spin here. Yeesh. And how would John feel? Even more pissed than the actual original. Because, well, even Nora and Ren will be pissed. Because they cannot, they, there's no way they can save them. And John is even more pissed that Ospin got Pura killed. And he also did got Weiss killed. By the same person, which is Cinder. And so basically the entire team... Um, uh, basically, John, Ren, and Noah, you know, head to the room so they could come down. Ruby goes outside to speak to Mar- Morena, trying to get contact with Crow, but, so basically that goes down the same until Yang tells everyone that Oscar is missing. So basically, everyone has to find Oscar just like the original, and John is still guilt of what he did to Oscar, which, which is, wasn't Oscar's fault. He didn't ask for this. And until John came across the statue of Pura. And that goes out of saying. Nothing has changed. And um, um, yeah. And then it's just. But the the talk where Renanoa said about how much they care for John. Just like they care for Pura. Their teammate and family, and they don't want to lose him too. And this is where John actually finally let go the guilt of the death of Pura. But he still has that guilt of the loss of Weiss. Because he still carries, still have Weiss's weapon in a briefcase along with her crown. And he's going to keep carrying it and looking at it until he gives it to Winter when they head down to Atlas. That's the only thing he will never let it go until he does. And um, I feel like John would be devastated. Literally. He, he would still be devastated for the Weiss. But the others, they're going to try not to think about it because they need to have their game their head focus, but how can they? The death of Wyatt still haunts them. And until later on, when all the group reunited, they found Oscar that he was inside doing the cooking, and everyone was just like, We leave, just like the original. And of course, John comes into the plan to still want an Atlas ship. That goes out of same, but why without Weiss, it would be challenge so basically they need to take out need to take out that damn mech thing way quickly before they hit the fan so basically what I'm saying is John, Ren, Nora, Ruby and Crow are going to have a difficult time to take out that mech let's just say they managed what they say let's just say they managed it but they all are just going to be exhausted and tired. With Blake and Adam. Yeah, that the fight goes out the same. And Adam tells Blake, like, I heard what happened to that Schnee girl. It's sad, really. It would be a shame if I just kill you or the rest of your team. And they did piss off Blake. Because he makes sure, she will make sure that no one... Of her teammate gets killed. So. And. Until. Um, Yang actually showed up. Just like the original. And where Blake does follow the angel. And she did grab. The one on the rock. Until Adam said. A moment of the truth Yang. Were you still faster where you were at Beacon? Hm. 
Me neither. So, basically, that 2v1 fight goes out the same, and Adam still gets killed. Just like the original, nothing has changed. And the and without Ruby, without no, no, without Ruby, without Weiss and her summoning to let Ruby to have on right on to so she could concentrate her silver eye, just that would not work. She had to use the Atlas ship to able to oh excuse me, to able to use her silver eye. So basically, she called out Jinx. Everyone froze except Ruby. So basically, that goes out the same. And Ruby managed to use her full power of survival to make sure that the Leviathan stays, um, um, stays to stone permanently. So that Leviathan is completely dead, but as a stone. But the stone of the Leviathan does break into several pieces. Then after that, that ship just flies off ahead down the Atlas without wasting time. And yeah. So they managed to get Blake and Yang back. So basically Ruby is shocked that Oscar able to um, manage to la save landing for the ship. And they were impressive. But Oscar tells them that he had a help. Which is Ospin. And of course, Crow manages to stop drinking, and they arrive in Atlas, just like the original. So, yeah. Basically, we're now in Volume 7. Okay, so we're going to get back where we started. We're in Volume 7, where everything does kind of goes out the same, but without Weiss. And of course, Mar uh, Maria says that there's a guy that he that she knows that they could go and hiding until everything calms down. But apparently, that does go out of the same. And there was a time where the guy is strong and been talking shit about Blake and the fun and stuff. It did piss off Yang, so he sucker punched the guy and he flies through the trash can and. They head down to Pietro's place where just like the original and and of course where Pietro realized Yang's metal arm and she said and Pietro said And you are team Ruby But where's Waishni? And they you Ruby's like Wait you know us and and Pietro was like, of course I do. My daughter told me so much about you. And Ruby said, your daughter? And Pietro said, yes, but you haven't answered my second question. And then, um, um, the, routine, the team Ruby just looked down and just, that's why they're here. To give out the news on uh, Winter. And that's why they need to find a way to get to Atlas. Because um, Maria goes to Pietro's ear and she tells him that she's died in the battle in at the, um, Haven Academy. And this heartbreaks Pietro. He's like, Oh dear, I'm so sorry. And they was like, you don't have to apologize. Until the alarm said, everyone just goes outside and John, um, you know, leave. Oh, uh, actually still carrying the weapon. And he placed it around his back so he could carry it. So he doesn't have to hold it in battle. The fight with them, uh, the heroes and the Grim goes out the same. When Penny shows up, just like the original, Ruby is shocked that Penny is alive. And then that goes out the same when Penny says salutation and 
she realized that after that, Penny could tell Weiss is not with them. And Penny asks, where's Weiss? And Ruby looks down and now looking. And Penny doesn't know what's going on. And so, um, John tells Penny that she didn't make it. And this heartbreaks Penny. So basically, Pietro, Penny knew. And so Penny has to go to do to do something to clear her mind from this. She doesn't know how she feels. And so, yeah. And of course, later on, they do get captured by the Aesops. And one of the Aesops realizes that John has something that belongs to the Schnee, the Schnee family. And John tells, it's for Winter. We only came here to inform Winter about why Schnee. And Clover was like, and what is that exactly? She's dead. And this shocked the Aesop. And they wonder, by who? Cinder fall. Cinder. She killed her. And that's why we want to inform Winter about it. That's why. And Clover ordered his team to put them in the trunk. Not in the trunk, the, the truck. And take them to Atlas Academy right now. Because uh, they need to hear this. And also... The Relic of Creation. Now, the Relic of Knowledge, I meant. And basically, that goes out the same. And when they arrive at uh, Atlas Academy, it is quiet. Back to be quiet again until later on. Where, um... When the others arrive, where we see Penny, Ironwood, and Winter... Um, about to head down to Iowa's office until Penny said, Oh, you guys here? And Winter turns around and see the others. And then uh, um, Winter tells the guard they release them at once. Her tone uh, voice with a depressed sadness. And they could tell Winter already knew. So the guards did, and they went inside, and they apologize, and they hear... So basically, Ironwood tells them that they hear about the Winter Maiden, the, the Relic of Creation, and the Relic of Knowledge, etc. So Crow is shot by, by saying, you told them? And and Ironwood said that he needs someone that he could trust, and after Ironwood's done talking... And Winter would be the first one spoke. And she asks, Is it true? Is it true that Weiss died? And no, everyone was complete silence. And Weiss shouts, Is it true? And John is the first one who spoke up and said, It's true. She died. I tried to save her the best I can, but I failed. Forgive me, I tried. And John pulls out something that the Aesop didn't take. A crown that belongs to Weiss. And John goes to Winter and give it to her. And Weiss, I mean, and Winter just feels a gun wrenching punch to the heart. And she just devastated that his her little sister just died. And is just heartbreaking her and then apparently she has to inform her family that what just happened so pretty much they're already unaware um by now i think so they could prepare for the funeral for Wai Shani, which is going to be the next day when they prepared and it's not a good thing uh chalk is just it is pissed. Uh, Whitley, he's trying his best not to show any emotion, but deep down he is feeling heartbreak. Willow, I mean, I mean, yeah, Willow, 
She's broken. Devastating. She's the only one who's broken tears. And then we all know what's going to happen. She's going to be drinking a lot. And, um... So how will this affect this volume? That means, um... Yeah. Without Weiss, they would never know about Watts. And that means they would never know that Jock made a deal with Watts. So, pretty much, things kind of hit the fan. Until Willow actually decided to enough and enough. So, basically, Willow decided to give up on her husband and reveal Watts way quicker. After, uh, in the middle of the meeting. So, yeah. And this did kind of piss off uh, Winter. But the reason why I did not mention about the, the heroes being trained by the Ace Subs in Hollywood, that goes out the same. And the mission they go, the upgrading, that goes out the same. The villain side, that goes out the same. Nothing has changed. I'm just focusing on the other character's um, point of view. John is still heartbreak, and he asked if he if they could turn the crown into something like a um hmm I don't know something that could uh, empathize um not empathize um um hmm what's the word I'm looking for. A part of Weiss that John could John could have, and I feel like the only thing I can see is John will have a symbol on John's armor uh, shoulder place would have the crown logo that Weiss had to empathize, showing respect of Weiss. Basically that. And later on, that's pretty much everything goes out the same. Um, they do get the Huntsman and Huntress's uh, license, but it just doesn't feel right it, to them, actually. And later on, like I said before, Willow did had enough, so she gave out, she gave up on Chalk to reveal that he made a deal. With the enemy who actually caused the life of their daughter. And what John doesn't give two shits about. So, yeah. So basically, later on, the rest of the Volume 7 goes out exactly the same. Nothing has changed until we get to the part where um, Salem shows up just like the same. And then... An uh, Iowa declares a martial law, and then later on is three v four against Team Ruby and Aesop. So yeah, this is not a fair fight. And how will this go? Let's just say I really want this to be interested. I there's there's two scenarios I could go with, but I really really want to. Um, want to see I can focus it on this. Um, I want to see I can make this work, okay? And I think this is the reason why I want to make this several parts and just go into one. So, I wanted to go with this. The team really do manage to put up a decent fight, but apparently three against four is not enough. So, team Ruby lost. And they got arrested. So basically, the only character that's been escaped will be, well, um, I will say, um, I will say, um, Winter actually managed to get, uh, Penny to escape with the Winter Maiden and went to stay behind. And Cinder gets pissed. So Penny, Maria, Pietro, John, Ren, 
Nora, and Oscar managed to escape. But but Team Ruby, Crow, and Robin, and Watts, all of them got arrested. So, yeah. This is where everything changed. And I feel like this is where um, they need to find a way to break out the other team. So they, cause they need them. So let's just say a day later, they found Oscar way earlier, and they need to break out the team Ruby out so they could come up with a plan without Crow. Crow, they want Crow to come, but they want to. Crow wants to stay, so Robin volunteered to stay as well to, to be with Crow. No, be by his side. So, Team Ruby actually escaped thanks to the other actually rescuing them. So, basically that. And the next day, since they found Oscar way earlier thanks to John and Nora. So, basically, the plan goes out the same in Volume 8. Nothing has changed. It's just adding a little bit in uh, because... Volume 8 takes place like a day or two later. So, uh, the team Jennifer found Oscar a uh, day later. Then the next day, they come up with a plan to rescue Team Ruby. But the hunt, the, hunts be, the Happy Huntresses want to break out Robin. But Robin wants to stay behind to, you know, to be with Crow. So I'm going to keep an eye on him. And she gave her huntresses to protect the people at Mantle, no matter what. Which they did. And, um... So basically, Ruby does have the plan to contact people around the world because they need help. Yang believes that they need to help people at Mantle. So basically, that goes out the same. So... So pretty much, the team goes out the same. Uh, Blake, Nora... Ruby and Penny would go to, you know, break at break Atlas military to get the enemy tower running and get the system going. Where Pietro and Maria would be at the enemy tower, where John, Ren, Yang, and Oscar would evacuate people from Mantle. So basically, that goes out of the same. Nothing has changed. And so basically, the arguing between Yang and Ren goes out the same, and Ren snaps on John, and then later on without Weiss. So basically, it goes out the same without Weiss in the rest of the volume until well, um, that day where um <laughs> the Hound attack in uh, the Shani house. Let's just say, um, um, yeah, Willow and Whitley, let's just say they get hurt and get killed a little bit. Yeah, they're dead. I just want to say that anyway. So, yeah, they're dead. And, no, I should take that back. I didn't want to be that harsh. They did not die. They, they got hurt a little, but thank God they have freaking aura. So... And, of course, um, so basically that goes out of the same, but without Wise uh, uh, defend against the Hound. And, so basically, yeah, they managed to take out the Grim, which is difficult for them, but without Wise. And, Cinder does get Watts out, just like the original, and Crow and Robin pretty much go... To stop Ironwood and Ironwood threatening Mantle, just like the original, until later on. So basically, everything goes out the same. Literally, nothing changes. Because without Weiss, the Schneef family almost got killed without Weiss' help. So basically, that. And basically, the, the plan goes out the same without Weiss. Um. Uh, yeah, volume eight goes out the same, but without Weiss. And the the rest of the volume eight goes out the same, 
until we got to the gateway, you know, from Atlas to uh, Vacuo. Um, <laughs> let's just say, when Penny gets stabbed by the claw of Cinder's grim arm, John is losing it. He's freaking out. He's going through this PTSD again. This time, he's, um, one that's trying to stop the bleeding the best he can, but Penny asks John, tell him no, this is his, her choice, her only choice, let her make this choice, and it's something I want you to do for me. Which, she's pointing at John's sword, and John cannot believe what Penny wants him to do. So, basically, John killed Penny and the Winter Man to go straight to Winter. Just like the original. Nothing has changed. And of course, Ruby, Yang, Blake, and John and Neo, they were the, the characters to fall. Since Weiss was not involved. So, this is going to be much difficult. So, let's just say uh, Blake was around to fight against Cinder. Where, um, they, tr Blake tried to save Ruby, but failed. But, apparently, yeah, Blake fall along with John. Nothing has changed. So, yeah, I just want to clear out of the way. And, yeah. And, pretty much, Volume 8 ends just like the original. Nothing changed. At all. And this is where I'm going to end this uh, scenario. Because, well, I just see no reason to continue on and wait until Volume 9 comes out. So you guys can wait another year for Volume 10. Which I do not want to do that. Which I don't. Plus, this video has been going way too long. Like an hour and long. And to answer you guys' question about... Does John ever going to unlock his semblance in this scenario... He does. The ending of the series of Ruby Volumes. Which, what I mean, that the only thing I can see John unlock his semblance is if Ruby is injured. Because, think about it for a second. He couldn't save Pyrrha. That didn't unlock his aura. He couldn't save Weiss. That did, un did not unlock his uh, semblance. I meant semblance when I mentioned by Pyrrha. My bad. I don't know why or I came to my mind. And in this scenario, he couldn't save Penny because his semblance did not unlock. So basically, Ruby would be the only one to unlock John's semblance if Ruby was injured. So basically, to the end of the series, if Ruby does get injured, John will unlock his semblance to heal and save Ruby. In this scenario. Which makes a lot more sense. And here's the thing I want to talk about. I would really love to see how this would play out. If John did not unlock his semblance. About how would this change. How would this affect the characters as a whole. And I know I was a feel I was slowly getting to the rush. For the volumes. Because for when I got to the volume, when I started with the volume five, I want to add a, the emotion and depth to it. Then later on, I did kind of a little bit went to rush a bit because I, I feel I'm feel I better get tired because my eyes about to about to close on me, and I need to go ahead and end this quicker as I can. So yeah, guys, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Links to my other channels, my social medias. And my Discord server will be down below. So, you guys know I'll all that shenanigans. Again, like, I'm share, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. As always, keep moving forward.